Hey guys, so in this video, we are going to see how to implement dark mode in Figma using color variables. And we are also going to see how to implement dark mode in CSS using color variables. So let's get started. So I would come here and I would set up my color variables in Figma. I would go to my variables panel and here I have my collection one. I'll just rename that to color and I'm going to create my first color variable and I'll call this background color and that's going to be white. Then I'll create another color variable that I'll call container color. Now that's going to be F4 and I'm going to have another color variable that I'll call button color. Now this is going to be a blue color and one other variable I'm going to have is going to be button text color and that's going to be white. And that's okay. So what I have here are my color variables, the background color, the container color, the button color, and the button text color. And th these values here are the light mode values. What this means is that these are the colors that my design will use in light mode. Now, to make our design more user friendly, I would want us to have another set of color values that our design can use when our design is in dark mode. And to do that, I'm going to come here, I would click on that plus sign there so I can create a new mode. Now, the first mode that I created, I would call that light mode. And this new mode that I just created, I would call that dark mode. Now, if all of these is new to you, sign up to our upcoming bootcamp starting on the 10th of january 2025 so let's come here and let's press the enter key after typing in dark mode there and what i'm going to do here is simple i'm going to ask myself what color do i want the background to be if the design is in dark mode i'll come here and i'll choose that color so in my own case i'll decide that when i'm in dark mode i would want the background color to be this color now the next value there is for the container color variable and I'm going to ask myself what color do I want the container to be when the design is in dark mode. I'm going to come here and I'll choose that and that's okay. Now after that I'm going to come here and say okay when my design is in dark mode what color do I want the button to have. I'd say okay when my design is in dark mode I would want the button to now have this color. And after that, I would come here and I would ask myself, when the design is in dark mode, what color do I want the button text to have? And I'll keep that color set to what I have here already. I would want the button text to still be white when the design is in dark mode. So let's close this and uh, let's close this also. Now what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to apply my color variables on my design, which is this. So I would select the page layout and I would go to the fill property section and I'm going to apply my background color variable. I would select the container. This is the element or this is the object I call the container. I would select it. I would come here and I would apply the container color to that. I would select the button, then go to the fill property section and apply my button color to that. And I would select the button text then go to the fill properties section and I'll apply the button text color to that text. And here I have my design. So how do we change our design from light mode, which is what we are seeing currently to dark mode. Now what I want to do here is simple. I want a situation whereby when a user clicks on this toggle button, the design will change to dark mode. Yeah, so let's do that. So I'll close this and I would create another variable, but this time around, it's going to be a string variable. Now that string variable is going to serve as a parameter that will be used to decide if the design should go to dark mode or if it should go to light mode. So I'm going to come here, go to my variable system. I would create a new collection and I'll just call that collection string. Now here in the string collection, I'm going to create a string variable that I'm going to call toggle. You can call that variable whatever you want to call it. I'll call mine toggle and my string value is just going to be no. Now you can set that string value to your name or you can set it to anything you want to set it to. In my own case, I'm just going to set that to no. 
Now I'm going to close the variable panel and I'll head over to the prototype tab here and I'm going to select this toggle button because that's the button I expect the user to click on for the design to go into dark mode or light mode. So I'm going to come here, I'll select the button and I'm going to add an interaction to the button. And I'll say, okay, when a user clicks on this button, what's the action I'd like to take? I would click on the non option there and I would select set variable. Now, when I click on set variable, Figma is going to ask me, which variable do you want to set? Now, the variable I want to set is the string variable called toggle. Remember, I set the value of that variable to no. So I would say, okay, when a user clicks on this button, I want that variable called toggle to change its value from no to yes. So I would say change the variable's value, which is toggle. The variable is called toggle. I would say change toggle's value to, and I would say yes. Now, as you can see, I am putting that in double quotes. Now, something has happened. What has happened? When a user clicks on this toggle button, that variable, which is called toggle, will change its value from no to yes. So I can use that as a condition now to ask Figma to change the color mode of my design from light mode to dark mode. As simple as that. So I'm going to come here and I'll say, okay, this is the first thing that's going to happen when a user clicks on this button, yeah? So I am going to add another action. i would click on the plus sign there. i would come here and i would put an if else statement. Right, that's going to help me check the condition. And I would say, if toggle is equal to yes, I want to set a variable mode. Now, which variables mode are you trying to set? You would come here and you would specify that. I would say, I want to set the color variables mode. And I would select color. When I select color, I would come here and I'll choose the mode I want to change it to. And in this case, it's dark mode. Remember, we have two color modes. So you can see the logic is just straightforward. When a user clicks on this button, the first thing we do is to change toggle's value to yes. Then we use an if else statement to check and see if toggle is yes. If toggle is yes, it means the user clicked on that button. And if that's the case, what we want to do is we want to set a variable's mode. Which variable is that? It's the color variable. We want to change the mode of that variable from light mode to dark mode. Very straightforward. So let's close this and let's test that to see if it's going to work the way we have configured it to work. And let's click on the toggle button. Now you can see everything is working just fine. So the next question to ask is how do we take this from dark mode back to light mode? Now my favorite way of doing this is by creating two buttons and toggling the appearance of these two buttons even though the two buttons might look the same yeah but i'll create two buttons and i'm going to toggle the appearance one button will be responsible for turning on the dark mode and the other will be responsible for turning on the light mode now since this is a very short video we are not going to go into all of that if you are interested in seeing how to do this, then sign up for our bootcamp. For now, let's head over to CSS and see how we can use color variables in CSS to implement this action. So I'm going to head over to my HTML document here. And here in my HTML document, I have all of these. Now I'm going to come here and I'll change that class name to page container and I'll call this content container and i would like us to see these containers in figma right so the page container is the page itself here the content container is this container here and inside the content container i have a button called the toggle button so i would stay there and i would create that button i would say toggle button and i would save that now let's give that button a class name of ptn and let's head over to css to design all of this now, when I come here in CSS, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to define my color variables. And remember, we have our color variables in two modes, the light mode and the dark mode. So I'm going to say root and in the curly bracket of root, I'm going to stay there to define my light mode 
color variables so i might as well go back to my figma variables panel so that i can get the exact color codes i would come here and i have just four variables i have the background color so let's define that here in css background color and my background color is white so it's just fff so the next color variable there is my container color which is having a value of f4 so I would come here, I would say container color, and that's F4, yeah? Now the next variable there is my button color variable. So I'm going to define that variable here. I would say button color, and the color code for that is 3808FP. Let's copy that. So I would come here, I would paste that. And finally, I have my button text color variable, which is white, and I would save that. Now, what I have done here is I have defined my light mode color variables, and I define them on the roots. So after doing that, I would come here and I would create a class called dark mode. And in the curly bracket of this class, I'm going to define the dark mode version of these color variables. So I would come here, I would say background color. My background color in this case, let's go to our Figma variable panel. Let's pick that as a background color and container color. Let's head over to Figma and let's pick that as a container color. And we have button color also. Let's head over to Figma and let's pick that as a button color. And uh, we have a button text color, right? Button text color. Now that color is white. So we are not going to head over to Figma just to pick that. So what I have here are my color variables in light mode and dark mode. So what I am going to do next is to apply these color variables on my HTML element. So let's take page container into CSS. So I'll set the width of page container to 100 and I'll set the height to 100 VH. So the width is 100%, the height is 100 VH. Now what about the background color for page container? So I'll say let the background color for page container be this background color here. And I would select background color. Now I would come back here and I would set the display property for my page container to flex just so that I can center the content container which is inside the page container. And you can see we have this, it's centered currently. Now what I have to design next is the content container. Now the content container will just have a width of 32% a height of auto and I would want us to give it a background color and the background color has been saved here as a variable so I would say background color for the content container container color and that's fine let's see that as you can see this is what we have in our browser so I would want us to pad this content container by let's say 10 rem for the vertical axis and 12 rem for the horizontal axis let's see how it's going to look no bad so i would come here and i would activate flexbox also so that i can keep the button at the very center so i would say justify content center and i would say align items center and the button is at the very center currently so what i'm going to do next is to design the button right so let's design the button let's take the button into css using its class name for the button, I would set the background color of the button to button color. I would set the color of the button, which is the color of the text on the button. I would set that to button text color, which we already saved as a color variable. Then I'm going to come here and I would set the padding of that button to 0.85 rem for the vertical axis and 1.5 rem for the horizontal axis. And here we have this. So I'm just going to set the width of the button to, let's say, all right. And there we have the button. So let's come here and let's set the border of the button to none. Let's set that to none. Let's set the cursor behavior to pointer. And there we have the button. So all we want to do at this point is to ensure that when a user clicks on this button, we toggle the color mode of our website here to dark mode. Now we are going to do that using JavaScript. 
So I would come here and I would create a JavaScript file, All right? So let's come here and let's link a JavaScript file here. And that's all we need to do. So I would come in here in my JavaScript file and I would bring in my roots element, right? Now this is me trying to bring in the root element on which we set these variables on, yeah? So I'll bring that in. I would say root element is equal to document dot document element. And I'm going to bring in the toggle button using an ID. So I would come in here and I would say, and that's fine. And after that, I would come here and I would say, okay, let's add an event listener on the button. So let's say BTN, add event listener. And the event is going to be a click event. And of course, I'll put a function here that says when this event is fired, all I want to do is I want to say root element dot class list dot toggle. And what do I want to toggle here? I want to toggle this dark mode class name. And I'll say dark mode. And I'll save that. Now let's go to our browser and let's see how that's going to work. Now you can see we have this. Easy. So that's going to be that for this video. Thank you and thank you for watching.